Right, so I was asked to do a video on inks, and actually inks are fascinating things. I mean, they fall into two main categories. It's kind of water-based inks uh, that are used predominantly for writing, and then um, oil-based inks that are used an awful lot for printing. Now, I make a lot of inks which are functional inks. That is, the bit that I have in there actually does some kind of job. So, for instance, if I want my printing to be magnetic, well, I put iron oxide in there. If I wanted to be conductive, I'd put graphite in there. If I wanted to have solar activity, I'd put cadmium sulfate in there. So there's a lot of inks you can make, not only for printing pictures, but for actually doing work where you're thinking about things like batteries, solar cells, supercapacitors, uh, thermoelectric generators, just a whole host of things can be printed if you can make your own ink. Now, Ink making is tremendously complex at the high end, but at the basics of it, actually, it's stunningly simple. And when you look at the history of ink, you realise that the single most important component of inks for hundreds of years was oil. Actually, linseed oil. Now, you can buy linseed oil, and you can boil it yourself, because what you actually need is something called boiled linseed oil. Unfortunately, boiling linseed oil is quite difficult, actually, because the, um, the oil boils about 30 degrees lower than the flash point of the oil. That is the, the point at which it would just burn. Then the uh, vapours given off are something like 30 degrees lower. So it's um, quite a difficult material to actually prepare, because unless you keep those flames away from the fumes that are coming off the pot, all you're actually going to do is set a light to everything. When they first started making ink, it was actually banned to make it inside. You had to go into the countryside and boil your linseed oil because of the danger of fire. So you can try, and I know people who have done it and had some success. Or you can do what I did, and that's just go down and buy some boiled linseed oil. I mean, we live in an awesome society, don't we? This is used for wood preparation, but it's as good for ink. Now, if we use boiled linseed oil, it is what's known as a drying oil. Now, it doesn't actually dry. It actually oxidises in the atmosphere and forms a hard, dry coat. And it's a waterproof coat, incidentally. You can't use any oil. You must use a drying oil. If you just use a normal mineral oil, it will just never dry. You can buy mineral oils that are drying oils, but they're a little expensive and a little hard to get hold of. Boiled linseed oil, I paid a pound for that. It's a piece of cake. It's the local big box store. No problem at all. So we're going to go back to basics and make a very basic ink using boiled linseed oil. Now, the only other thing that you need, really, apart from your boiled linseed oil, is the, the particles that you're going to put in there. Now, the particles that you put in there, because it's going to be printed, have to, have to be extraordinarily fine. Now, you can make them yourself. It's a, a carbon called lamp black. You basically light a candle, put it in a uh, reducing atmosphere, and it'll form soot. You do that by holding a piece of glass over the next to the candle flame, and you'll see the soot form. Now, it's a little bit tedious to do that, but you do get a good result. Uh, it's much easier to find a ton of readily available black material that is of sufficient fine quality to make a nice black ink. And that's this stuff. It's actually toner from a toner cartridge. Now, obviously, you can buy toner in different colours, so you could actually make uh, coloured ink quite easily. Now, toner is essentially a black covered in plastic. It doesn't make much, much of a difference because the particles are so small and black is a very strong colour. So this will do a really nice job of making an ink. Now, all you really do is get a scoop of the material that you want, little hole in it and pour some of your boiled linseed oil in there and what you need to do is mix that until that has sufficient quality for you to be able to use it. So let me give you a close-up of the mixing process. Now you notice I'm on a glass surface because it's nice and smooth and I've got myself a scraper and I've taken my toner and made a little puddle of linseed oil in the middle and you fold it over until the thing begins to wet. Once you've got to wet a little bit, all you actually do is drag your knife through so that you mix it up. Scrape, drag. When you get to the lumpy bit there, clean the edge of your knife, get it back into the centre, press and pull back on yourself, and you will begin to mix that ink. Now, there are lots of 
ways to mix ink actually. This is perhaps the cheapest method and it's quite intense in terms <laughs> of its effort. You have to put the effort in there, but it's great if you're just making a small bit. A better method, and it's used by artists, is to use something called a muller. A muller is just a big glob of glass with a nice round bottom and you go round and round and round mullering it, which is incidentally <laughs> where that phrase came from. An even better way, and one that I use quite a lot, is a three-roll mill. And I'll show you a three-roll mill in a minute. And all you do is you keep on pressing and pulling until you've got your colour mixed into your oil. To a consistency where you think it's going to be good. And it makes quite a stiff paste. And there is our black ink. So this is a three roll mill. What it is is three steel rollers that turn at different speeds. You pour ink between those two, the different speeds give differential shear, rolls around the rollers and is scraped off on the exit roller. It saves you a lot of trouble but they are a little bit expensive. So once we've mixed it we can put it onto a printing block and we can print it and we get a nice black drying ink. Now that is an astonishingly simple ink obviously. But there are other things that you can do with it rather than just mix it with the linseed oil. And it very much depends actually on what kind of thing that you're going to print it on and what kind of result you want at the end of the day. Because that's a pretty tacky ink. One way to actually thin that out a bit obviously is add some more oil. If my um, colour is expensive then I can use something called an extender. Now extenders tend to be um, transparent or semi-transparent inorganic solids that you add there and then mix it up, mix it through. It doesn't affect the colour, but it means you have to add less of the material to get a sufficiently tacky ink so that it will adhere to the surface. Now sometimes the adherence to the surface actually is not um, not what you want. You want it to come away from say the metal print and onto the paper. And you can use an agent to do that and it's actually just soap. So you can stick some soap in there. Sometimes it doesn't have sufficient tack or it won't dry hard enough and you can add an agent that will make it tackier and make it harder when it's actually um, set and that's rosin. So rosin is a tree sap. This particular rosin actually is ground up and it comes as this ground off-white powder. You add that to your ink and you'll get a much tackier ink that dries with a much harder scratch resistant finish. So you can add rosin, you can add soap. Now we used black. Black actually is will dry all by itself. Now remember drying isn't actual drying, it's oxidation of the oil to um, form that hard dry coat. So it's not literally drying. But you can add dryers. Now traditionally the dryers were lead salts and of course we don't use lead salts anymore but it turns out that cobalt and manganese salts will do exactly the same thing. But again you can actually just buy dryers. This is turbine dryer with cobalt added. It's a Rustin's product. A tiny bit of that will speed up the drying of your ink. So if your ink isn't drying you add a little bit of dryer. Now inks as I say are superbly interesting. Not only because of the effect you can have in printing and printing different ranges of things and different colours, which are themselves great, they're also really good for functions that they can perform, particularly when you're looking at functional inks. Now the basics that I've shown you here are good enough for making your own functional inks if you wanted to have a go at block printing solar cells, then that's a good way to go around doing something like that. I haven't been very detailed on the amounts that you use, and there's obviously a reason for that, is I don't know what amounts you're going to use because I don't know what it is that you're going to give it a go. Most of the stuff that I've talked about can be turned into an ink that will print and dry of sufficient quality on a ground, that is the paper or whatever it is you're putting them on, if you experiment a little bit. And you're going to have to do that. So you mix up an ink and you give it a go and you see how well it adheres, how scratch resistant it is, how it performs in terms of the function, how long it took to dry, that sort of stuff. And if you're getting bleed out, you've probably got too much oil, so add less oil. If you're not drying it, add a dryer and so on until you come up with the recipe for your own ink. And of course that's really important that you do that because then you'll have that knowledge. Now, 
ink recipes were a very closely guarded secret and still are a closely guarded secret because they take a little while to work out but you can do some absolutely amazing things with inks not only for printing but in terms of their functionality too. So I thought I'd share that one with you first really because the possibility of um, experimentation and coming up with your own devices like I say solar cells, thermoelectric generators, batteries, supercapacitors, it's huge actually. You could do an awful lot. If what you want to do is print then toner available in the, the colours that it is and in black makes a great printer's ink. Anyway I thought I'd share that with you. I hope it was of interest and thank you very much for watching.